So one of the really interesting things I think coming up to an election is how different the international and domestic environments are since the last time we had an election. The foreign policy white paper that the current government's brought out is a really interesting document. Mm. What do you think about that and how do you think that will land on any, any new government? I like the way you put it because I think if we cast our minds back to 2016, it's only a few years ago mm. and so much has changed. Uh, I mean, no Trump. Trump was still a nightmare, an imaginary nightmare rather than a reality for a lot of people. Uh, the strategic environment has changed a lot, I think, in the region since then. And I mean, your, your work, uh, you know, issues like terrorism and countering violent extremism, I think that landscape has shifted pretty awfully as well. So we've come a long way. Um, how is it going to land? Look, I'm, I think the strategic environment has changed. I actually think that a lot of our security and foreign policy agencies have done quite a good job behind the scenes in the last few years of trying to anticipate and get a grip on change. Mm -hmm. So I think as a nation we're a bit more prepared than perhaps a lot of observers assume. Uh, so I'll go to the foreign policy white paper, for example. Uh, I think that has anticipated change and uncertainty. We're not sure where the United States is headed. We know that China is powerful, but it's in a region where many other countries are rising as well. Australia's got to do more to get its act together in this strategic environment. I, I think the next government, of whichever political complexion they may be, is actually going to be pretty well prepared and well briefed. That doesn't mean, of course, that they will be ready. Um, what do you think, Jacinta? Yeah, look, I really like the foreign policy white paper, and it, it does present as a, as a good strategic statement of intent that I think is um, above politics, yeah. above partisan politics, and it does yeah. hold us well. One of the really interesting things for me in that was having looked primarily at counter-terrorism and national mm. security issues and how do we create, um, a, how do we position Australia in a, a global environment of ideological battles, mm. is that this statement grounded us in values. Yeah. It, the starting point was, this is who we are, a liberal democratic country, um, honouring rule of law. And it was sort of bookended with um, soft power. Mm. You know, how, how do we do that? That's a really nice way to think about things. I suppose my concern with it is uh, because it didn't have a particular program of activities associated with it. Or money. Or money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, funding yeah. the dream. Yeah. Uh, it, it remains to be seen how we're going to do that. But it is a really good way to posture things. And I think one thing that will set Australia up very well in terms of anything we do in the international or domestic environment and in our region is to ground things in those values quite clearly and openly. Sometimes when we talk about policy or we're engaged in a, you know, in a particular activity internationally, mm. particularly in terms of, of conflict, uh, talking about that issue becomes the issue rather than why we're doing it and yeah. what it stands for. And we've got a very informed public. Uh, we've got a very well aware public that can understand complexity. We probably just need to talk about Maybe that a bit more. Maybe you've got a bit more faith in the public than I have, but, but I agree there are, I, th I think there is a debate that needs to be engaged mm. with and there's, there's, there's growing pockets of awareness. I still worry a bit, and maybe this is a interesting point to um, to dig into whether whether the public has been fully brought along on the yeah. journey. I think I think the bureaucracy the bureaucracy is ready. I think the the strategic elite actually has probably a better sense of the challenges that lie ahead than, than some commentators, including perhaps a few of my own colleagues uh, at ANU, would suggest. But I'm not sure we've brought the public with us. And I think whether it's on the issues I deal with, I mean, looking at strategic issues, looking at China, for example, whether it's looking at the, the CT space, counterterrorism, uh, and, and the whole social cohesion debate, mm. do we, is the public ready for, um, I guess, uh, strategic shocks? Uh, and we've seen some awful shocks lately uh, for a government that basically has to tell them um, that uh, really, there are no easy there are no easy options. Mm. What, what do you think? Yeah, look, it's interesting. I mean, talking about yeah. this just a few days after the Christchurch attack has yeah. shown that there is a hunger to discuss these things. There are a whole yeah. range of ways that we discuss them. Um, some of them are yeah. more more polite than others, yeah. and I'm particularly thinking of the difference between how mainstream media and leaders uh, dealt with the the aftershock of yeah. Christchurch. Very self regulating, very reflective. Yeah. Uh, not speculating too much, not not talking in extremes, but yeah. the social media world was was alight with um, with yelling, of course, yeah. in that. So, um, 
are we prepared enough to deal with strategic shocks? Uh, I think that we could do better in providing some of that nuance and some of that information more generally in an easily accessible way. It won't stop people from yelling, yeah. but a really simple one. Um, uh, I've, been, I've been talking a lot to, to a range of people about what the terrorism environment is in Australia in the aftermath mm. of Christchurch. And it's very clear on the public record that uh, intelligence agencies and police have not only been talking about right-wing extremism, a, a small mm. but dangerous issue in Australia have talked about an uptick mm. in, in that, that base in trying to recruit people and do mm. things and have actually stopped a major mass casualty plot in 2016. Yeah. Uh, the Joint Counterterrorism Team in Victoria arrested and charged a right-wing extremist who was going to undertake a, an attack. And yet a lot of us haven't heard of this. And the information isn't <laughs> easily available, yeah. um, partly because that individual is going through the court process. Mm. But uh, when I was trying to show yeah, mainstream mm. journalists and mm. others where to find information about this, it doesn't exist. Mm. So. Uh, governments can do much better in providing easily accessible information available um, online. It's where people go to. If you, if you Google right-wing extremism in Australia, it's very hard to find data and stats. Uh, we can extrapolate this to a whole range of yeah. issues. But one thing that really interests me in terms of how do we model good behaviour mm. and practice in informing the public is this quite extraordinary change, this sea change really mm. in the public's understanding of foreign interference. Ah, yes. And yeah, yeah. one thing that stands out to me as an observer is what we saw with um, the Four Corners and Fairfax investigations yeah. two years ago and the impact that had. How do you think that the, the public's responded to that and and how do you think that places us to deal with this complex? Well, that's issue? another. I mean, that's another of the big issues. That if you like, if you look at the nexus of politics yeah. and yeah. national security and foreign policy, uh, you know, it's right up there. And I think the foreign interference issue, whether it's China or whether it's uh, some other country, some other actor, as they as they say, um, is going to be, mm. I think behind the headlines of a whole lot of other issues. Mm. Um, I don't think it'll be front and centre of the political debate, and I don't think it should be, mm. um, yeah. just as I think that anything that, um, I guess, sensible people can do to take the politics out of the terrorism and yes. social cohesion issues is, is, is a good thing. Uh, but the issues will be there. So I think one of the things that I worry about going into the election is that disconnect, if you like, between public awareness, um, business awareness, and what I think the, if you like, the national security and foreign policy elite um, are pretty well informed about now, both yes. from yeah. unclassified sources and I believe from classified sources too. Uh, and this is not just Australia, it's globally. Uh, so the Chinese influence and interference issue, and of course emphasising this is the Chinese Communist Party, it's not Chinese people per se, um, is going to be there in the background, I think, in this election, other elections to come. Uh, one of the challenges a new government, whether it's uh, Liberal or Labor in the, uh, the months ahead, will have is to find continuity, I think, mm -hmm. with some of the achievements that we saw under the Turnbull government, which were bipartisan achievements, uh, to build a new raft of laws, to manage foreign influence and interference, to do it in a way that I believe does respect the rights of Australians from across this diverse society, and also to do it in a way that says to China, we want to continue to have a mutually respectful, mutually beneficial relationship with you, mm. uh, but we have to do it on terms of our own sovereignty. And I guess what I worry about is that if, if politics comes into this particular issue um, come election time, uh, and it, it can happen, uh, I don't think it will, but it can happen, that's going to have all sorts of distorting effects. Uh, and so in a way, although foreign interference and terrorism very different, very different issues, uh, and, and we shouldn't assume that there's a, a, a solution that somehow addresses both of them, the same risk is there of politicisation. And so I think anything that, that, that good analysts and scholars can do to bring public attention to the good work that has actually been done in the policy community mm. and the non-partisan nature of that work and how that work can help inform um, any potential future government is, is going to help uh, really build, I guess, national solidarity on those issues. And then let's see the election fought, I, I would like to imagine, on other issues.